Hi, everybody. JJ here. Happy Friday. And again, thanks for those of you that are joining us here on YouTube and Facebook uh, for our PCDIY live show. As always, I'm excited to be able to talk about what's new with ASUS this week when it comes to our component series of hardware. So overall, hopefully everybody has been having a positive, productive week and uh, things are wrapping up on a good footing. And as always, hopefully everybody is staying safe and staying healthy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to kick things off. Uh, thanks. Hey, Comb. Uh, Ken, thanks for joining the stream. Appreciate it, man. Um, Najee, thanks for uh, joining. And Terry, also thanks for joining us here on the stream. So again, happy Friday. Hopefully everybody is doing well. And uh, let's get ready to go ahead and kick things off here. So first things first, I want to go ahead and touch on um, uh, update in terms of just general UEFI updates. Um, not a huge number of updates that have come out this week, but as always, we do like to touch on them um, and just give you guys visibility if there's going to be kind of any large, important updates that might be coming around. So for those of you who might be aware, when, it, when we're talking about UEFI update releases, this is essentially your UEFI BIOS, the firmware for the motherboard. So uh, we do recap essentially these UEFI releases weekly within our PCDIY Facebook group. If you're not a member, make sure to go ahead and join us there because you'll get the most updated information in terms of product launches, insights, tips and tricks and a whole lot more inside of that group. And it's a fantastic community of PCDY enthusiasts, especially those that love ASUS hardware. Um, so make sure and join us there. Now, in terms of updates for this week, most of the updates were spread between a couple of Intel boards and a couple of AMD boards. This is essentially just wrapping up um, the kind of the last end of boards that haven't necessarily received uh, what we refer to as kind of out of box ready Windows 11 support as well as for the AMD series of motherboards, 400 and 500 series motherboards, which are receiving the uh, latest Agisa, the 1.2.0.3 patch C release, uh, which has essentially helped to um, improve upon interoperability issues when it comes to USB functionality on those motherboards. Um, neither one of these are UEFI updates I would deem as being kind of critical. Even the Windows 11 uh, update is not a requirement to technically enable Windows 11 support. It just helps to streamline the overall experience is there are a couple of uh, key parameters that if you go about installing Windows 11 may actually have to be enabled so that you get the best experience. Um, again, if you want to make sure to find out which models we have listed, join the group. You can see the entire list. And for those of you that are also interested in Windows 11, let me go ahead and share the link with you guys so that if you're interested in kind of checking out uh, some of the configuration parameters and a little bit more information, you guys can check out that link. Hey, Zach. Uh, happy, uh, happy Friday, man. Hopefully you guys are joining us here. Hey, Stefan, um, as always, when it comes to any type of new product announcements, if we're getting ready to launch the product, we're definitely going to be announcing it here in terms of the PCDIY stream. Um, but right now, nothing new in terms of the Zen Wi-Fi line, although we have recently updated uh, the Zen Wi-Fi line with new models like the XD6. So as always, you know, ASUS is really at the forefront of releasing uh, a lot of exciting products when it comes to our networking product line. I will be touching on a new uh, Wi-Fi 6E add-in card uh, that we're going to be coming out with shortly. And as always, like I said, if you want to stay up to date, make sure to join the group and and of course, check us out here on Fridays. Um, but with that, let me go ahead and share with you guys the uh, Windows 11 uh, site here. So give me one second. Load up this page for you guys. And uh, get this loaded up here. Okay, uh, so here we at uh, the site, guys, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you go over to the site, you'll essentially see we have an entire listing. Gives you kind of the key information uh, broken down between Intel and AMD-based platforms. Um, gives you the information regarding what's referred to as firmware TPM, which is the easiest way to essentially enable the board uh, operating parameter, which is a requirement for Windows 11. Um, all the corresponding motherboards that we do have support for, along with essentially the UEFI uh, options that are available for those boards. So you pretty much just have to go through there, click the corresponding link for your motherboard in the corresponding file, and you're good to go. It's a very straightforward process, and I will go ahead and uh, share that link with you guys. So nothing too complicated on that side. And I'm going to drop that in the chat. All right, guys. Hey, Zach, uh, when's the Ryogen 2 being released? Uh, in the not too distant future, we did actually cover this in a prior PCDIY stream, and we do actually have a uh, product release calendar. If you're, part, again, part of the PCDIY Facebook group, or I update that, and it helps to give visibility on products that we've kind of announced, um, but ne not necessarily have released in terms of what we call channel availability. But um, make sure to go ahead and keep tuned. Uh, a little bit more information will be coming very soon in October regarding kind of our refresh wave of 
uh, coolers. So this will include the Ryujin 2, um, as well as updated versions of our Strix LC2 series coolers and the new Tough uh, LC ARGB edition, which also features the new Tough Gaming ID design. So uh, there will be quite a number of new AI updates coming in the not too distant future, including the Ryujin 2. All right. Hey, Ken, um, in terms of, uh, there's right now, there's no new planned uh, Gundam series motherboards that we're going to be launching. Uh, we pretty much have gone ahead and completed the entire launch for our Gundam series accessories, uh, as well as core components. So that would include graf graphics cards, motherboards, uh, monitors, uh, routers. We had kind of an entire suite of products. So there's nothing new planned for the Gundam. We do have some exciting other IPs that'll be coming down in the pipeline. And when we're ready to kind of detail those a little bit more, and once they're actually going to be available, rest assured, again, they will definitely be detailed and talked about here on the PCD while I stream and we'll give you guys definite visibility. But if you didn't get the chance to pick up that limited edition Gundam release when we did launch it, it will not be refreshed. The only partial refresh that we'll be bringing in a little bit later in Q4 is we'll have a small refresh of some of the base peripherals. I believe that's going to be for the Gundam mouse and I think for the um, mouse pad. Might maybe be one, one or two other items, but for pretty much all the other core components, uh, those will be available. If you are looking for, a course, a white-themed product, um, then we still do have quite a number of white-themed products um, on the AMD lineup. So you can take a look at our Prime Series and motherboards, or you can take a look at the ROG Strix B550-A. Um, they are very popular for those that are considering kind of white-themed base builds, okay? Oh, fantastic, man. Kevin, really awesome to hear that you're enjoying the PG279QM, the ROG Swift. Um, that's my dream monitor. I'm looking to upgrade to that monitor, I think, with the integration of the G-Sync module, that 1440p, that really nice color accuracy that the monitor has, um, and that ultra-high refresh rate. It really is kind of a dream monitor to hit kind of the sweet spot of really kind of giving you everything you could ask for, I think, in a high-end gaming monitor. Uh, of course, so some, they might want to be able to jump to a larger size. And of course, they also might want to be considering, uh, you know, peak HDR performance and um, higher resolution support. And we definitely have monitors like the PG32UQ and many other monitors uh, amongst the ROG, ROG Strix and Tough Gaming lineup, if that's kind of your vibe. But I think the PG279QM is definitely a sweet monitor, man. So thanks for uh, sharing your feedback on your good experience with that. Um, as of right now, there's no new planned uh, X570 motherboards. I'll be talking about one of the last uh, X570 updated boards that we'll be releasing pretty much shortly, which will be the Tough Gaming X570 Pro passively cooled version, essentially version two. Uh, but as of this time, uh, there are no uh, new, essentially, X570 boards planned. We've essentially just launched these four new passively cooled base motherboards. And if you're looking for a white X570 base motherboard, check a look at our Prime series. Again, that's a very popular X570 series motherboard. It's proven, it's reliable, it's solid, um, and it's definitely gonna get the job done, regardless of whether you're gonna go with a Ryzen 3000 series or 5000 series CPU. Hey, Richard. Thanks for joining the stream, man. Happy to have you here. So thanks you. All right, guys. So that, uh, again, wraps up our UEFI updates. Again, uh, for those of you that didn't see it in the chat, um, you can go ahead and make sure to check out that Windows 11 update page if you want to make sure that you're keeping tuned there. And of course, for any of you that just want more insights in terms of what's going on with UEFI releases, whether or not you should update your UEFI or other questions, definitely consider joining our group. And I also have a YouTube video on our ASUS North America YouTube channel, which dives into actually how to go through the flash process and some other insights that you may want to keep in mind if you're not that familiar with some of the uh, things that occur when you actually update your UEFI. So uh, just uh, FYI for you guys there. All right, guys. So next things next, uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some other news, okay? Uh, give me one second here, guys. Um, another update that I want to go into is actually going to be um, kind of a little bit different. Uh, it's not something we normally cover in terms of our core hardware here, but for some of you, I know that you have always asked me about like, hey, when is there kind of new ASUS ROG kind of apparel coming out? And that's uh, definitely something that we're also working on in terms of our community initiative for maybe some cool giveaway opportunities. So again, make sure to keep it tuned to the group for things that we may be doing there specifically for our members of the group. But that being noted, I did want to let you guys know that we have formally launched our ROG slash essentially uh, apparel line. So this is an updated ID design, which helps to kind of spread across quite a number of different uh, pieces of apparel. So we've got a few different bags, we've got hats, we've got um, t-shirts, quite a number of different items. Let me go ahead and actually share the site with you guys. Um, now, currently our Asus eStore, which already did have some of these products listed, is actually in a transition stage. Um, it's right now essentially just getting shifted over to a new server. So it'll be actually in that transition. It won't be accessible for you guys to be able to pick these items up until I believe after the 26th. 
6th. Um, but then the site will be back up and you will have access to those items if you do want to check them out. So for those of you who might be wondering about like, when is it going to be available um, in the not too distant future? So don't worry about that. So let me go ahead and uh, just quickly show you the uh, kind of the quick link and you guys can definitely dive into it if you guys are more interested in any one of these items. And we may maybe do a little bit of a dedicated stream on this in the future. Maybe let's maybe do a giveaway, something like that. Love to hear your guys' feedback in the community if this is something that you're interested in here. So um, here you can see we've got the ROG slash apparel. You've got everything from hats, uh, kind of cool drawstring bag. Um, we've got the messenger and the sling. I'm a big fan of messengers and slings that they're always with me when I'm out and kind of about. Um, so I um, just maybe want to show you guys here the cool messenger bag. It's definitely got that kind of little bit of accent design, which you see within our ROG Strict Series products. Um, it's pretty sweet. It's got definitely some nice tactile design elements, a lot of different room that you can play around with in terms of what you can do to uh, be able to kind of utilize it regardless of how you're going to equip it. Um, but again, you know, it's a pretty expansive product line uh, that we have here in terms of the ROG Slash. So again, you've got your messenger, your sling, a smaller carry sleeve, uh, Electropunk t-shirt. And you'll also see there's actually quite a number of other links for other items that sometimes people aren't even aware that we have actually available. So uh, again, I will drop this um, in the chat for you guys if you guys want to check it out. All right, guys. So next up, uh, let's go ahead and keep moving this along. So uh, next up is going to be, we also have recently launched a brand new 1440p kind of landing page. And essentially all we mean by landing page is a website that helps to kind of consolidate information for those of you that might be looking for getting a little bit more specific information regarding certain types of monitors. So right now, if you go to our ASUS website, there's like filtering options and you can kind of toggle between different resolutions, different types of lineups. But this landing page is has really been geared specifically towards uh, hopefully giving uh, you know gamers, I think specifically, a little bit more visibility on some of our latest 1440p models. Uh, a lot of 1440p models have seen some really cool updates, uh, whether it's going to be you know items like HDMI 2.1, uh, much higher refresh rates in terms of refresh rate, and also uh, just a general in improvement in terms of the numbers of panels that are available and the performance metrics that those panels offer. So let me go ahead and share that with you guys as well. And so if you guys are interested, uh, you can, again, also check that out. So here you guys can see uh, we've got uh, this cool little page. It's up there. Um, it also has direct links, which is a nice thing. I know for some people over the last couple of months, they've been asking about a lot of these monitors like the PG279QM, the XG278QM, the Tough Gaming VG278Q. And right here, you can see we've tried to make it streamlined and accessible for you guys. So you can click like the Shop Now button and you can see that you have direct links to a number of our channel partners that do carry these. So then it will take you directly to um, that listing. So it makes the process hopefully a little bit more streamlined, a little bit easier for you guys. And again, if this is something you guys appreciate and it's something you guys you guys find useful, we'd love to hear your guys' feedback as well. Um, there's also a little bit of a breakdown of some of the nice course key functions and features and design elements, some review feedback, and of course, a really nice um, comparison chart. So you can actually see a lot of the key information regarding many of these monitors. So if you want to like a little bit easier way to kind of go side by side and see what are some of the key metrics, maybe between kind of G-Sync standard with a G-Sync module as opposed to G-Sync compatible, HDR performance, uh, the type of panel, whether it's like a fast IPS, IPS, whatever it might be, uh, you have that information broken down to you there. So hopefully you guys find that useful. So I will drop that in the chat as well, guys. Oh, hey, Zach, thanks. Yeah, um, yeah, we're, we're going to be continuing making updates to the Asus eStore. Uh, we have some even bigger kind of, I think, um, kind of revision plans in place. Those necessarily won't be all in play when we make the full kind of transition over uh, when it comes back online on the 26th. But definitely as we move into the end of 2021 and we move into 2022, um, we do have a lot of kind of plans to help to continue to expand and improve upon the experience so that for those of you that are interested in purchasing directly from Asus, um, then the Asus store will definitely be an option for you outside of purchasing uh, from many of our channel partners, you know, whether it be Newegg, Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, wherever it might be. All right, cool. So uh, let me go ahead and keep moving this along, guys. 
So uh, next up, uh, we've also got, uh, sorry, yeah, ROG slash update, our Asus eStore, 1440p, and Windows 11. OK, cool. Yeah, actually, that covers up pretty much all the key items that I wanted to touch on in terms of general kind of updates. And of course, if you guys got questions, feel free to go ahead and keep dropping them uh, in the chat. No worries there, guys. I'll attempt to go ahead and answer them when I can. Um, one that I did want to go ahead and just Tease a little bit here. It's not a product yet that is going to be coming out. It'll be coming out definitely in the future uh, as we kind of move probably into the very early part of 2022. But it's a current existing monitor that we're going to be updating to complement a lot of the white series products that we have. So you guys know 2021 has probably been the biggest year for us in terms of releasing an expanded product white uh, kind of series uh, product line. Um, and I, I feel actually very confident saying that I don't think that there's any other manufacturer that actually has the depth and the range of a white series of components that Asus is offering. If you take a look that literally we're offering everything from white, um, you know, uh, motherboards to, of course, laptops to uh, large monitors to, of course, keyboards, mice, headsets, chassis, graphics cards, power supplies, coolers, um, you know, even small uh, IEM based headphones, we're literally almost trying to have uh, in somewhere uh, across the lineup, a white based offering. And so uh, it's an extensive undertaking because there's a lot of challenges, especially when you go about implementing white design in terms of kind of yield, consistency, color control, and many other elements, but we're exciting to continue to be able to offer um, our enthusiasts in the PCDOI community just more breadth and depth to, I think, some really well-designed products that we have in terms of the design and the aesthetic. And whether you wanna go uh, with a white themed system or whether you wanna go with a traditional black themed system, um, you're gonna be able to build a foundation from either one of those. So to kind of complement that, uh, we do actually have something that will be coming out, as I noted, um, later on, not now. Uh, it's just a little bit of a quick teaser, but uh, you'll see here we have an XG series monitor, and you're going to be seeing this guy later on in a white variant. So uh, I think very exciting. I think a very cool addition. It's going to maintain that same cool stylized ID design that we have for our current XG series monitors in black but you're gonna be able to rock it in white. So when you talk about being able to pair that up with your white theme system, and of course your ASUS white components, I think it's gonna be a fantastic way to just kind of bring your setup uh, further together. And of course, for those of you that have really cool setups, keep in mind, if you haven't submitted your build or your system setup, uh, make sure to do that for our PCDIY Builder Spotlight. I'll make sure to drop a link in the in the chat uh, for those of you that want to make sure to submit your builds, uh, but I'd love to be able to showcase them here in terms of the PCDIY Builder spots, Spotlight. All right, guys. Um... Hey, Richard. So um, I can't get into any kind of specific details, but we do not talk about any type of products that uh, essentially may or may not be under designer development or potentially might be under NDA. So everything that we try to cover here on the stream is going to be products that essentially we can officially disclose. So as always, if you want to make sure to keep up to date on the latest and greatest, make sure to be part of the PCDIY group. And also just make sure to check us out here on every Fridays, because as soon as we have the opportunity to be able to touch on any type of new products, they're definitely going to be talked about here. So no worries in that regard. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and keep moving things along. Hey, John, happy to see you here, man. Thanks for joining the stream. Always great to have you here, man. Hopefully you're having a great Friday and getting ready to uh, kick off a good weekend, okay? All right, uh, so now I wanna go ahead and touch on a few new products, actually just a couple of products, two, one motherboard and one monitor that we have that are gonna be brand new. Um, so uh, one is gonna be a continuation of the X570 series of motherboards that we've kind of been rolling out for about the last um, you know, month and a half, two months uh, as part of the kind of the X570S. Now, technically, there is no X570S chipset. Uh, sometimes there's confusion out there amongst people thinking that there's an X570 chipset. There's not. Every motherboard that is an X570 based motherboard, they all utilize the same chipset. Um, X570S is part of the framework within the EGISA firmware that helps to enable uh, support for a passively cooled chipset. And we have now five motherboards in total that essentially fall under that passively cooled chipset configuration that some people will refer to as an X570S based motherboard. And the last motherboard that we have, uh, last week we covered um, the second to the last with the ROG Strix X570-E Gaming 2, which is a fantastic board, especially if you're looking for something a little bit more price aggressive that finally introduced a truly high-end enthusiast feature with Dynamic OC Switcher, but at a lower price point as that feature was exclusively only available on our Crosshair 8 Dark Hero and our Crosshair 8 Extreme. So helping to follow that up is uh, they're gonna be probably uh, one of the most popular boards within this kind of refresh, and that's going to be with the Tough Gaming X570 Pro 2. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. So give me a second to 
load up some pictures for you guys here. It's a great looking board. And uh, the really cool thing about this is not only does it feature, of course, uh, the revised ID design, but this model will also uh, be featuring, uh, excuse me, the new updated um, design elements uh, for kind of tough gaming. So uh, that's a really kind of cool aspect to it in terms of the, the prior generation, uh, there was a little bit of a different kind of design element that you had. And so um, right now here, I just wanted to kind of show you, this is the current generation. So this is the pro, right? And now we're going to have the second Ascension generation uh, of this board. So let's go ahead and do like a little bit of side by side. And I'd love to hear your guys' kind of thoughts and feedback between the two. So they're both going to still be pretty much monochrome. That has been our design kind of trend as of late. So we can see uh, right next to me on the right hand side. Uh, well, yeah, here on the on the excuse me on the left hand side and then on the right hand side. So on the Left-hand side, you have the original Tough Gaming Pro model. And then on the right-hand side, you have the newer now uh, version two. And you can see, of course, if you look directly in the chipset section, in the chipset section, uh, one has the fan and then one does not have the fan. And you'll also see that little bit of the different design there in terms of the design aesthetic where it's been updated to now complement all of our current design language for Tough Gaming. So all of our new products, like our new graphics cards, new monitors, uh, new peripherals, everything moving forward will be utilizing the new Tough ID gaming design. Um, I'm a big fan of it. I think it looks fantastic. So uh, if we go ahead now, focus again on this one a little bit more specifically, this board is really going to kind of give you everything you could kind of ask for in terms of all the key specifications. Strong and robust teamed VRM uh, in terms of the overall power delivery. So you can run any 3000, 5000 series CPU, stock or overclocked, internal USB Type-C header. You got dual M.2 support here in terms of PCI Gen 4. So one coming from the chipset, one coming from the CPU. Uh, you have an M.2 heatsink that's on there. You've got multiple RGB headers. Wi-Fi is built on board along with high-speed next-gen LAN. Um, and it's really going to be a great baseline. Now, uh, of course, as you move up into ROG Strix or you move up into the ROG boards, you're really going to get some more advanced kind of specialized premium design elements. But for somebody that's looking for a stable and reliable, great foundation for an AMD-based build, this is a fantastic board. So price point on this guy is going to be coming in at... Uh, <clears throat> 259, uh, which is definitely quite a bit underneath the price point that you would see for, let's like, something like the X570 Dash E Gaming 2 or the Crosshair 8. So uh, let's go ahead and bring up the product page and uh, show you guys just kind of some of the key features and uh, functions here on this board. So give me one second. And we will bring this up here. And I will also double check, make sure I'm not missing anybody's uh, questions there. So give me one second here. Uh, if I have a question, uh, so let me just see here. Uh, I have a question. If I'm using the DIM.2 slot with SSDs uh, and the X570 does the GPU. So it actually depends. Um, okay, so the DIM.2, if I remember, I'd have to double check the manual, but you can double check this, of course, within the manual. I believe the DIM.2 on that extreme board is actually linked in terms of the chipset. So uh, being linked to the chipset is independent, of course, from your primary CPU supplied uh, PCIe lanes. So like in the extreme configuration, uh, because they're also the X570, excuse me, um, Z590 along with uh, an 11th gen series CPU, you have support for one um, kind of auxiliary uh, gen 4 M.2 SSD, and then the ones in chipset, you could essentially run all uh, those three kind of those three connected, and they wouldn't impact the primary by 16 PCIe slot speed. Um, but if you're kind of just want to verify the overall kind of permutations or the slot uh, how, how the slot bandwidth may be affected. The easiest way is just look at the actual reference information for the storage, specifically within the manual detail. Um, but no, the DIM.2 should not affect your PCIe lane assignment and bandwidth uh, for your primary graphics card on that board. Hopefully that answers your question there. Okay, guys. Um, I have a... Okay. Hey, Carlos. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, man. If you update to the X570-P board, it's a really solid board. It doesn't get as much coverage because, of course, the Dash P is positioned underneath the Dash A. So it's a little bit more of kind of an aggressively priced board. It doesn't have as many kind of quote unquote advanced features or specifications, but it's a solid board if you want to be able to jump into the X570 based kind of platform. That along with the Tough Gaming X570 Plus, the version one board, 
both really great boards from an aggressive price point to be able to kind of give you a really solid foundation if you want to go with X570. So um, let me go ahead and bring up this page here. Here we go. And we will show a little bit more about this guy. Okay, so here you guys can see uh, that brand new ID design. Of uh, course, AM4 socket with updated UEFI. This is going to be out of the box ready. You don't have to flash or update the motherboard. It will support any Ryzen 3000 series or 5000 series CPU. Um, it's got a 12 plus 2 um, VRM design implementation. That's our teamed power stage design. So it's going to be very efficient and very effective at giving you responsive power delivery, uh, whether you're going to be running generalized workloads or heavier workloads. You do also have good overclocking options in the UEFI, whether you want to go with like PBO2 or you want to go with per CCX based overclocking, they're both exposed to you. Uh, very large and robust heat sinks. Uh, you get USB type C on the rear as well as in the internal connection. Uh, wi Fi 6E as well as 2.5 gigabit. Uh, so you got that next generation of wireless connectivity. 2.5 gig is really nice, and that Wi Fi 6C is fantastic. Although, do keep in mind for Wi Fi 6C, it does require Wi Fi 6C compatible router, and you have to be running Windows 11 to be able to essentially unlock Wi Fi 6C. Otherwise, uh, if you didn't have a Wi-Fi 6E router, but you had a Wi-Fi 6 router, you ran Windows 10, you can still get outstanding performance, great latency, but it's not going to uh, be running in Wi-Fi 6E's maximum bandwidth. Uh, our two-way no AI noise canceling technology, and of course your Asus Aura Sync, which is all accessible through the Armory Crate software. All right, guys, and here you can kind of quick, quickly see the recap Extensive I.O., very solid I.O. range in terms of the back of the unit right here. As I noted, uh, you have the Type-C that's on the back as well as the internal Type-C. And you've also got that Wi-Fi 6E, 2.5 gigabit LAN. You even got optical output for some of you guys that might be able to run this out to an external receiver. Um, nice isolated audio design with the Tough Gaming isolated audio design, which is also shielded. Uh, some vendors don't uh, actually shield their audio. And uh, it also comes with the DTS audio suite. Uh, of course, you get all kind of our advanced cooling control options uh, with Fan Expert, which is, of course, tunable within the UEFI environment as well as with the operating system. Uh, those are all kind of the fan controls right there. And uh, overall, a very solid platform. This right here is also just one other item I wanted to show. This does feature our brand new uh, Wi-Fi antenna design implementation, which is a bit more stable um, based on kind of previous feedback where some users in the prior generation uh, wish that we had a more stable design in terms of the Wi-Fi 6E antenna. So, excuse me, well, the Wi-Fi antenna because uh, Wi-Fi 6E is still pretty new in terms of the number of motherboards that have it. All right, guys. So again, uh, that is going to be the Tough Gaming uh, X570 Pro Wi-Fi 2. I uh, should be seeing this hit stores uh, shortly in terms of overall availability in the next couple of weeks. And as I noted, this guy is going to be coming in at 259. All right. Um, yeah, so actually, um, Payne, I'm pretty positive that it actually is in the manual. Uh, again, if you kind of want a little bit more insight, um, feel free to go ahead and join us in the group, the PCDIY group. It's a great community that we have that helps to really provide insight into kind of questions like these. And again, if you always feel like you uh, need to ask somebody, you can always tag me if you want within the group as well. Feel free. But we do have a really great set of users in there. Hey, Richard. Um, what do you think inverted build motherboard for better temp CPU and GPU and M. Interesting. Um, inverted builds are kind of kind of complicated in terms of kind of trying to define how you think that the airflow is going to affect those primary components. But overall, I wouldn't really be concerned with it. The reality is that M.2 temperature I think is going to be somewhat irrelevant, whether it's going to be a traditional um, configuration or whether it's going to be an inverted configuration. It really shouldn't be a factor. Um, the M.2 heatsink is going to pretty much uh, be able to dissipate the majority of the heat. And keep in mind that short of kind of like a stress pe stress test benchmark, the actual thermal load that's placed on the M.2 drive and the performance that um, essentially may be limited because it gets too hot isn't really a legitimate concern. It's, it tends to only really be an issue when you're kind of heavily synthetically loading the drive, but in normal real world situations, it's generally not a point of concern. Um, as far as kind of that GPU um, and CPU configuration based on thermals, that very much just depends on the chassis design and kind of your airflow configuration and setup. Um, so it's hard to be able to say, you know, what's a better choice. Now, if you really kind of wanted to try to ensure that the temperatures were as low as possible in terms of the VRM take, for instance, then you know you would probably want to go with one of our higher end boards that have a heat pipe along with the two stage heat sink design. That's generally going to be on our ROG Strix series or our ROG series motherboards. 
Whereas like on our Prime or Tough Gaming series, we generally have what's called a two-stage heat sink design. That means that there's uh, maybe two large robust heat sinks, but there's not necessarily a heat pipe that connects, that connects the two for even better thermal dissipation performance. But again, uh, the reality is under kind of generalized working gaming loads, and even actually a lot of times under synthetic working loads, it's not like the, the thermal performance difference between, let's say, like a Tough Gaming Pro and an ROG Strix X570-E board is going to be um, poor versus great. Um, both are actually going to be very good in terms of overall thermal dissipation performance. Uh, it's just one's going to be operating a little bit lower. It's kind of a better way to kind of look at it is almost between comparing something like a 240 millimeter O to a 360 millimeter AIO. The delta performance is not necessarily that large. It's just that one just does a little bit more in terms of offering better th thermal dissipation and maybe a little bit of quieter operation. So it becomes kind of a preference where just some users that just want lower temps want lower temps and they're going to get a board that is equipped to help to operate at even lower temps. So hopefully that answers your question. If you have kind of more specific ones, then you can definitely feel free and, and again, tag me in uh, the group with that question. Hey, Legendary, uh, thanks, man. Um, I'm doing okay, you know, I had the chance to, you know, uh, wake up in the morning, uh, learn a little bit, help some people in the community and be able to talk to you guys about cool hardware. So beyond that, I try not to really ask for more than that uh, outside of, you know, the, the, the um, you know, the health and the safety of, you know, um, my friends, my family, and definitely my dogs. So um, thank you, man. Hopefully you're doing well and you're taking, court, uh, uh, taking care. Um, Payne, uh, we do actually have a Discord. Uh, we don't have, it's not run by our North America team. So I'm uh, the one that actually is the admin and helped to run our PC DIY community. Uh, group. Um, our Discord is actually run by our, our global team, um, but we do have one. So if you actually do search out Discord, you can find one that is run by our global team, but it's also a little bit more broad uh, where it kind of covers um, system related products and some general kind of um, component series products. But if you're kind of really focused in on wanting to be uh, responsive to the core PC DIY components, then make sure to check out our PC DIY group. Hey, um, Neo Matrix, thanks for joining the stream, man. Happy to have you here, man. Thanks so much. All right, guys. So actually, uh, let me go ahead and do that quickly. I'm going to drop the um, group. Uh, excuse me. I'm going to drop the the link to the group here. So give me a second, and I will. Um, in case anybody wants to join the group, I will make sure to have it visible. And then we'll get into our second product, which is going to be uh, for uh, a brand new ProArt series monitor. So. Um, for those of you not familiar kind of with the ProArt series monitors, the big thing that we do there with the ProArt series monitors is going to be really, I think, offer a series of monitors that are really designed for kind of creators and professionals, users that really kind of have a focus on color accuracy and color control. Um, because when you talk about kind of a traditional monitor, one of the different areas of differentiation is going to be the number of axes in terms of kind of like, let's say, hue and color control that you have available to you. On a ProArt series monitor, you have like six color access control. There's a lot of subset granularity and options for calibration and profiling. And of course, the coverage that you're gonna have for things like sRGB, uh, DCI-P3, um, Adobe RGB, as well as many other OSD options are gonna be more advanced within our ProArt series monitor. So we have definitely within this last year really significantly extended this lineup um, from great models like our CV series, which are pretty price aggressive, you know, only coming in at a, at a um, you know, a couple of hundred dollars, right, in terms of the price point, all the way up to our flagship series, like mini LED monitors, which of course can be a few thousand dollars. Um, but uh, this model that I want to be able to touch on is going to be the brand new uh, PG, uh, excuse me, PA3328 uh, CGV. So uh, let me go ahead and load this guy up for you and we'll show you what we got going on here. So this monitor is uh, gonna be a fantastic choice for those of you, of course, like I said, that really wanna be focusing on color accuracy. Um, and this is gonna be giving you 32 inches IPS based display, 2560 by 1440. So not a 4K display, but a really nice big uh, size. So 32 inches, 2560 by 1440. Um, it will actually support a higher end refresh rate as well, uh, which will definitely be interesting. Um, so you're gonna have 165 Hertz support, which kind of helps to actually bridge a little bit of an ecosystem between kind of like gaming, um, but content creation. So this could be interesting for those of you that may be actually using high refresh rate cameras, so mirrorless cameras, action cams, where you're maybe shooting content in 120 hertz and want to be able to match actually um, the experience there on the monitor. So traditionally, 120 hertz has only been found on our highest end professional pro art 
uh, series displays. So this is actually bringing it down to a much lower price point to be able to get, um, you know, a Kalman verified display that has very high quality, quality color quality, high refresh rate. Um, and again, for maybe some of you that are splitting between kind of gaming and some content creation, this is a very interesting based option. So. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. Now you'll see in terms of the design aesthetic, it's got that really nice clean stylized pro art series design, but one other cool element here is going to be that this monitor also will feature our new clamp based design implementation. So again, from kind of desk setup standpoint, it's really going to be nice because if you want to just clamp that onto your desk, you can just clamp that on there and gives you a lot of additional space there that you don't have to have the base of the monitor essentially obstructing that space within your desk. So I really love this design. Um, and for some of you that are wondering about the desk mount kit for the RG series monitors, again, that's going to be coming in the not too distant future. So make sure to keep it tuned. We did cover that in last week's stream. If you guys want to find out a little bit more about the desk mounting kit, but it's a really nice option to be able to essentially take a wide range of our monitors in the RG lineup and be able to add that kind of C clamp mounting design, but you still actually do have some elements in terms of ergonomic adjustment. So um, this model, the PA32, uh, excuse me, the 328 uh, CGV uh, will be coming in at, let me triple check here, it's price, I think it's going to be seven, 799 if I remember correctly. Uh, give me one second here. 749. So very, very nice in terms of the overall price point. Um, so let me go ahead and bring up the actual product page here and you guys can actually see kind of all the specifics on this guy. All right, here we go. Got it. All right, guys. So again, this is, as you can see, big, large display, 32 inches, uh, IPS, 2560 by 1440, 165 hertz. You can see 95% DCI-P3, 100% sRGB. Um, and that's going to be, I think, really outstanding, of course. Really good Delta E accuracy. Kalman verified, which is even more stringent than standard validation policies. USB-C connectivity. Display HDR of 600, which does definitely give you a bit more kind of contrast and punch and lively dynamic. Even if you run the monitor in pure SDR mode, being that it's an HDR 600 certified display, also does going to it is going to give you a brighter and punchier SDR experience. So again, uh, even if you don't run HDR, you still will definitely benefit from moving over to a display which has an HDR certification like HDR 600. Um, FreeSync Premium Pro support and that C clamp and ergonomic stand are going to be both present on this monitor here. Um, and keep in mind for the USB-C connectivity that also does support power delivery and display port signaling. Um, and USB kind of hub functionality and the, the power handling, I believe, is up to 90 watts uh, for that. So it's great if you want to be able to tie that into kind of different configurations of workflows. You can see here a wide range of ergonomic adjustment, which is, of course, going to be um, kind of a hallmark for ProArt series monitors. So you get the swivel, tivet, uh, excuse me, um, tilt, swivel, uh, pivot, all those kind of core elements in terms of how you want to be able to get things set up for you. Uh, SDR to kind of S SDR to HDR workflow that we talked about there. Very impressive in terms of the overall uh, color coverage. I'm a big fan of this 165 hertz. It's really, really sweet uh, to see within this professional display. Here, of course, we have um, many course options in terms of the quick color gamut adjustment. And these have all been tuned by our team, which is fantastic. And here, where I was talking about where we have the ProArt palette, which gives you a lot of controls for making adjustment things to like gamma, uh, temperature, of course, individual colors, um, and just a wide range of options that you traditionally don't have on a standard monitor. So again, not necessarily a gaming focused monitor, but with that 165 Hertz, you do get definitely a nice refresh rate. And it's also gonna be great for creators that like I said, that are moving into high refresh rate content. And you can see your connectivity that's available to you there. All right, guys, so that is going to be this monitor, and lastly, you can see right here uh, the wide range of ergonomic adjustment. And you can, of course, put this on an arm if you did want to. This one will be coming out in the not too distant future again. Um, probably in most situations, you'll probably see it in about a month's time or so. Could possibly be a little bit less than that. Once it actually hits availability, we'll give you guys an update again. But coming in at 749, and I think is going to be a great addition to our ProArt series monitors. 
Hey, Frederick. Uh, we've actually covered quite a number of recently some new um, curve monitors. Uh, so again, I don't know if you're just joining us now uh, for this stream, but we have actually released quite a number of uh, curve-based displays. So if you haven't maybe taken a look recently at our um, you know, product page and our landing page for our different monitors, make sure to check it out. Um, you'll actually find this pretty good range of monitors in different dimensions, different resolutions that we have that are curved. Um, you know, one thing, of course, always is a challenge, which curve is also going to be kind of um, consistency and experience and also, I would say, distortion. As much as some users really appreciate and kind of love the immersion elements, there are still some challenges that you can potentially have with, I think, distortion depending on your kind of use case or experience. So for us, we continue to really try to strive towards a balance of offering um, users really kind of all the different types of options, whether they want to go with something traditionally large and flat, right? Um, or they want to go with something curved. We want to try to be able to offer really, um, you know, users across the board, a lot of different options in that regard. So uh, that wraps up that introduction there for um, a new product. So give me one second here, guys, and I'll keep moving that along. And uh, actually, let me go ahead and drop in uh, a link for that monitor if you guys are interested in there. I'll actually drop the links for both the Tough Gaming and for that PA series monitor. So here you guys go. This is for the Tough Gaming board. And here is for the PA series monitor. OK, great. All right, guys. So that are the, those were the only two new products that essentially we're introducing that will be available shortly in terms of channel availability. Um, I did want to go ahead and touch on one other new product, though, that we'll be coming out with shortly, and that's going to be in terms of a wireless adapter. Second to take a drink here. All right, guys. So uh, for some of you that essentially may not have um, a motherboard that comes equipped with Wi-Fi 6 or maybe Wi-Fi 6E, maybe you're running from a motherboard that might be from a few years ago. Um, maybe it has like dual band 811AC, but maybe you finally have upgraded to a Wi-Fi 6 a router, or maybe you're potentially considering moving over to a Wi-Fi 6E router. Well, what are some options for you? Well, uh, as you may or may not know, Asus does manufacture add-in cards, and we are going to be releasing a new um, PCE add-in card, specifically an AX Wi-Fi 6E card. So let me go ahead and show that to you guys. Okay. Here we guys goes. And so this is going to be the PCE AX 58BT. Um, you can see right here, it is going to uh, go ahead and give you support, excuse me, um, we we'll have two versions, uh, an AX and then a Wi-Fi 6E version right here. But pretty much the design is going to be very similar. You can see it's got a nice, clean black heatsink. Um, this model does include both Bluetooth and wireless. So in case you're kind of wondering about, will it give you kind of both? This is a great option for being able to add a high-speed based wireless uh, to your system. Um, and in terms of kind of speed, the thing that's really impressive here is if you kind of pair this up with something like an AX82U or an AX86U, um, any number of our high speed kind of AX based routers, you can legitimately see performance that, you know, is in the real world three, four, five, six times the throughput of 10, 100 Ethernet cable. And definitely at the shorter distances, you know, in that optimal kind of sweet spot between about 10 to 20 feet, depending on your RF environment, you can actually be approaching or even exceeding gigabit level throughput. That literally means over a thousand megabits wirelessly, which is truly impressive and at very low latency. So the reality is that, um, you know, you can actually now be in a scenario where your wireless is actually going to be much faster than the ISP service that you might have. Or if you've got a high end, let's say fiber or gigabit plat gigabit class ISP service, you can finally have a wireless based solution that can really help you to get the most out of that. Now, it's, it's important to keep in mind that one of the key differences that you still have with uh, wireless as opposed to a wired based connection will be that wireless essentially will uh, go down in terms of its overall throughput as you increase the range. So with a you know a gigabit Ethernet cable, um, it's going to be a thousand megabits essentially across the entirety of its distance that it's being run. So whether it's 10 feet, 25 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, 
the throughput is essentially going to be the same, whether it's going to be at the closest point or it's going to be, you know, 100 feet away. With wireless, that's where having a benefit of having very, very high throughput wirelessly, even if, let's say, you have a slower speed internet connection. So let's say your connection is maybe only 25 megabits or 50 megabits or 100 megabits. Well, it still can be valuable because if, let's say, you have a connection uh, for your desktop and it can have over a thousand megabits, right? Well, that's only thousand megabits, maybe within the first 10 to 15 feet. By the time that maybe it gets, you know, 250 feet away, it might get down to let's say 200 megabits, but that would still be faster than of course, than your ISP. So even at its range, you're still being able to fully maximize the speed of your ISP service. And so that's an important thing you wanna keep in terms of kind of understanding um, how to kind of set up and arrange your overall wireless configuration. And of course, with Wi-Fi 6, a really big uh, benefit will be the multi-user MIMO technology, which helps to essentially improve the way that multiple devices all work with the router at one time. So um, I'll talk about this in a second when we get to like the promos, but here, this is an example. This is our RT-AX82U. Very good, very nice unit uh, with a in terms of, uh, you know, its price point, it's got RGB lighting, which is kind of cool. I don't have a, the power connected to it. Um, but traditionally, if let's say you have your wireless device, if we had one device, two device, three devices, four devices, um, without multi-user MIMO, there's actually kind of a sequential process to how they all work with the router. So that means they're kind of going in one line contiguously. But with multi-user MIMO, you can actually have one, two, three, let's say four devices, and they could actually all be working at tandem at the same time with the router. And so this helps to reduce latency and overall improve the experience. Um, so keep in mind though that multi-user MIMO, um, there can be different levels of the number of devices that are concurrently supported depending on the router. So that is one thing to kind of keep in mind now. All right, guys, uh, well, that covers uh, that update in terms of a new, like I said, wireless adapter that we'll be coming out with. Let me go ahead and just double check if we got any questions before I get into next block over here and talk about some good promos that we've got going out. But again, uh, we do have the PCE uh, AXE 58 coming out soon. So that will be, I think, an exciting card for those of you that are out there. And I will show you uh, that card just because uh, I showed you the previous one, but let me drop that in the chat there as well, guys. So here you can see this is the AXE version. So I showed you essentially the Wi-Fi 6 version, which is already available, but this will be the AXE version. And you can see it pretty much looks identical, right? Small, compact, black heat sink looks great. Nice, very large antenna design, magnetic base, and you get that Wi-Fi 6E. Do keep in mind though, with Wi-Fi 6E, as you see right there, where we've got the AXE 11,000, to unlock Wi-Fi 6E, you have to be running Windows 11 and you have to have a Wi-Fi 6E router. If not, if you were to buy this card and you pair it with any of our Wi-Fi 6 routers, you can still get a fantastic experience, but you will not be able to achieve the full Wi-Fi 6E experience, okay? All right, guys. So uh, let me just see, uh, is there any kind of questions there? Um, Hey, Richard. Uh, yeah, so definitely, um, yeah, the Wi-Fi 6E, excuse me, uh, Crosshair 8 Hero. It's going to be a fantastic board for any Ryzen 3000, 3000 series or 5000 series CPU. And of course, uh, I believe you're referring to kind of 6000 series for the graphics card side. Um, they definitely support, of course, smart access memory, resizable bar. It's just a quick and easy option that you can enable directly from within the UEFI. Hey man, awesome, thanks for joining the stream, man. Uh, Z77, man, very cool that you were able to build in the Z11. Z11 is a really cool chassis. Did you happen to build vertically or did you go horizontally? I know a lot of people do it vertically, but I really like actually the look horizontally. Um, you don't get as much, of uh, course, visibility for that kind of cool front tempered glass panel, but I like kind of that side profile look. But man, it must look really sweet with the Ryogen 2, which is that big, large uh, new cooler that we've got with 3.5 inch display. That should be really, really sweet. So if you haven't, also make sure to join our PCDIY group. It was linked in the chat there and uh, drop a full shot of your system build. I'd love to feature it in terms of the PCDIY Builder Spotlight, man. But that sounds like a sweet build, man. Thanks. Okay, very cool. All right, guys. So uh, let me go ahead and just move things along here to some cool promos that we got going on. All right. 
So uh, first things first, um, we do still have some current pre-orders, guys. So I know for some people that were kind of wondering about the X570 Creator Board, as well as the Crosshair 8 Extreme, we do still do have some promos that are currently going on there. So if you did want to um, do a back order on that at Newegg currently, they still do have both of those motherboards on back order. So you can go ahead and pretty much lay in your order. And then once those boards are available, you would be good to go. All right, guys, I have dropped those in the chat there for you, and you are set. And uh, give me one second here. Okay. So uh, next, I want to go ahead and talk about, guys, some cool kind of like little promos that we've got going on here. Um, so some pretty sweet deals that are happening right now. I will drop a much deeper kind of link to all the promos because there's too many to actually go into right now at this time. Uh, but we've got some cool promos that are going on right now for peripherals, uh, for motherboards, for networking, and for monitors. So if you're interested in kind of any one of these products, then definitely check out some of the sweet promos that we've got going on right now. So one of the first ones that I want to touch on here is going to be for this guy, one of my absolute favorite headsets. Uh, this is the ROG Delta. Uh, this guy is on promo currently. Let me go ahead and uh, bring up uh, its page right here. Give me one sec. And uh, this model is currently, yeah, it's going to be $30 off of its actual uh, current price tag. This is a USB-C based uh, headset. So the cool thing that you have here is that literally you could take, you know, your phone and you can plug it straight into your phone. You can plug this straight into your Nintendo Switch. You can plug this into your desktop. You can plug it into your laptop, um, anything with that native USB-C connection. And this does have a quad ESS Sabre DAC and amp built into the headphone. So the really cool thing with that type of design is that the audio quality is definitely punched up in terms of tonality, warmth, sound state. It's a fantastic sounding headphone. Really, really nice detailing, detachable mic. Uh, you can see that nice RGB lighting that's there. That is fully controllable so that if you do want to go ahead and change it up, you can jump into the software and do that. Uh, if you want to turn it off, you can quickly just toggle it off. You can also see here it's a little bit more subtle in terms of overall kind of its look. I'll give you that side kind of view set. Um, you can detach the microphone, so you don't have to have the microphone attached if you don't want to. Um, it does also support a nice foldable design here, so you could lay this flat on your neck. And it does come with two different ear cups. So one is going to be more for isolation and for more comfort, and one's going to have you a little bit more breathability, but with a little bit less isolation. Um, and there is a huge range of software adjustments available once you connect this to a system, including virtual surround, fully uh, customizable EQ curve, a lot of different options, but fantastic headphone here. Um, and again, like I said, $30 off right now. Let me go ahead and drop the link in there for you guys. So give me one second here and I will drop the link in there. Uh, oh. Looks like my link is not active, so let me just go ahead and bring this up right here. Okay, guys, I got the link for you guys. And again, $30 off right now, so coming in at 119 See if there's a question there. Oh, very cool. Uh, so Z77, cool that you did it vertically. I still think it looks fantastic. That vertical setup looks really, really nice, so it's still a really nice setup. Hey Hyper, uh, hey Hyper Warp man, thanks for joining the stream, man. Happy to have you here, man. Thanks so much, and uh, thanks for having um, a desktop from us, man. CD11, man. So definitely, it's it's uh, not a full PC DIY system, but definitely, uh, thanks for the support and appreciate it, man. And definitely, I know for a lot of people out there that that's a way that they kind of segue over time into further kind of customizing their build. While it's maybe upgrading, you know, their cooler, upgrading the memory, upgrading the storage, but they, you know, they just want the simplicity of having something that you know you can take out a box, hit a button, and get up and running, right? So, um, fantastic there. So. so Again, um, you can go ahead and pick up this guy on Amazon right now for that $30 promo off. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our next uh, promo here. Hey, Zach, uh, so I just actually linked the back order um, on uh, the actually listing for the Crosshair 8 Extreme. So again, be coming in shortly. Pretty much it's already actively in back order. So be coming in stock very soon. Um, can't give you an exact kind of time frame because it depends a little bit kind of logistically in terms of how process that gets 
how quickly that gets processed by Newegg's team, but uh, you can expect availability in the not too distant future. That uh, should be coming up pretty quickly. All right, so that is gonna be the ROG Delta, again, off, 30 bucks off. Next up is gonna be actually another headset um, that I think is gonna be a great value play, and this is gonna be the ROG Strix Go, and this one is gonna be uh, $25 off. So this guy is gonna be quite a bit more compact, quite a bit lighter weight, and the really cool thing about this one is this is the ROG Strix Go 2.4 gigahertz model. So the 2.4 gigahertz should hopefully let you know that this is going to be a wireless headphone. So um, again, very nice in terms of its overall design. Uh, it's very comfortable, very lightweight. It's quite a bit actually lighter weight than the Deltas. Let me go ahead and put this on here for you guys. You had a little bit of shot right there. This is the Electro Punk version, which is actually also on sale. It's even a little bit more off. I think it's $32 off as opposed to $25 off for the standard. Uh, so one's got a little bit of the pink accent and the other one doesn't have it. I like the one with the pink accent. I think it looks nice. Um, but this does come with a USB-C dongle. So the USB-C dongle, again, you can attach it to anything. You can attach it to a switch. You can attach it to a console. You can attach it to your phone, to your PC, and you have that 2.4 gigahertz wireless. That is gonna be superior than Bluetooth because there's more bandwidth. It's a stable and solid connection. Um, it also does allow for more customization. So again, in Armory Crate, you can go ahead and customize things like an EQ curve. You can enable virtual surround. You can have specialized profiles that you can tune things for. Um, but this model does also come included with a really nice little carrying case. So that you get this, you get a nice little pocket right here that you can kind of store everything in there with. Um, the headphones do fold up, which is really nice. So let me just show you here, like you can fold everything up here. See, like there, you can fold them up. You can put them into this uh, carrying case right here. Um, and on the inside here also is, you can see the detachable mic. So it's got a nice boom mic that you can go ahead and connect uh, for when, if you want a microphone. And it does also have an analog connection. So the analog cable connection gives you more flexibility to use with more devices if you don't have a, a USB-C although it does come with an adapter inside there to adapt the USB-C to USB-A. So you do have essentially both connection options. But with the analog connection is if, let's say you have a motherboard, like one of our motherboards that has an isolated audio design with a DAC and a better audio quality, you will get better audio quality from an analog line level connection than you would from the wireless uh, connection. So if you want, kind of want even potentially better audio quality, you can connect the analog cable and then plug that into a device. So you do have kind of a wired and wireless experience available to you on this model. So you can go ahead and set it up how pretty much however you'd like. So um, it's a really cool model. Again, this one is also coming in at a, a reduction of $25 for the standard model and then um, a little bit over $30 for the, uh, excuse me, for the electro punk version. So let me go ahead and uh, Give me one second here. I'll share the link with you guys if you guys want to see which model I'm talking about right here. And I'll share the link to the Delta as well, guys. So. Here's the ROG Strix again. I showed you guys kind of a little bit hand on there, but there's the USB-C dongle, the mic with it deta uh, attached. There are of course some examples of, like I said, you can use it with a phone, you can use it with a switch, desktop, laptop, fold it up. You got the AI noise canceling microphone as well. And uh, the other cool part there too, as you can see, is actually the integrated mic. So um, the cool part to that is that even if you don't have the boom mic, which has the best kind of tonality um, to it, that even when you're on the go, you can still have actually a microphone that's built into uh, the headset, which is nice. Fast charging support, which isn't necessarily always common. So that's nice to be able to see that. And you can see up to 25 hours battery life. There's your on cup controls right there. So things like volume uh, or muting the actual uh, headphone as well as being able to make adjustments right there. And here's that little travel case along with, like I said, the cables and everything that you need right there. And uh, the Armory Crate software, like I said, when you connect that essentially with 
the USB-C cable, you'll have all the exposed kind of options that are available to you, excuse me, the USB-C adapter. And let me go ahead and add in the uh, Delta there as well. Okay, guys, uh, let me just see. That was a question. Hey, Hyper, uh, Hyper Warp. Yeah, man, that's cool. Yeah, adding a water cooler, uh, that's a solid upgrade. Of course, it's just going to give you lower temperatures, maybe quieter operations. So um, that's, a, that's a solid upgrade that you would make to a system. So, man, best of luck to you with the build, man. So let's go ahead and go into our next promo right here. So give me one second. Next is going to be the ROG Chakram. I got it right here. All right. So this is a, a really cool uh, wired and wireless gaming mouse. Uh, it's tri-mode. So that means that essentially you can go ahead and use it either wirelessly. Or you can use it with the USB-C cable, or you can also utilize it with Bluetooth. Um, so this model does have some cool design elements here. I can actually show it to you on the secondary cam, but there's a removal kind of transparent cover. It stores the actual 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter there for low latency gaming grade wireless support. Um, it's got a nice extended lip design right here, which allows your kind of thumb there to rest to it. A little bit longer body, but really fantastic mouse. And this one also does have the ability to customize the switches. So let's go ahead and actually take a little bit of a closer look here on the secondary cam. Again, we can see what's going on with uh, the Chakram. And the Chakram is, I believe, going to be $30 off, if I remember right. Yep, 30, 30, yeah, 30, you save $30. So nice savings there on the Chakram. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. So here you can see, here's the body. Um, it's got a cool three-level design. So uh, RGB lighting here at the scroll, here at the rear. And then you're also going to get lighting that's going to be um, kind of right there. So that's going to be a cool, cool design that you have available to you right there. If you see right here, when I pull that off, you're going to have there the storage right there for the wireless adapter, USB-C connection right there, right? Nice large feet. Here's the actual toggle option so that you can toggle between Bluetooth, um, off, and wireless DPI button there so that you can make quick adjustments if you want on, on uh, the actual mouse directly. And this model also does support, of course, the ability to customize the switches and you don't actually have to even use any tools. You can see right there, I've got the exposed switch. So let's bust out my famous uh, uh, little switch tray that I got right there. So these are all kinds of different types of micro switches. You could literally remove that micro switch out. And let's say if you wanted to go with something that was a little bit firmer, then you could do that. If you wanted to go with something that maybe is going to be uh, even longer lasting, then you could do that. There's a lot of different options in terms of different types of micro switches, but um, literally you could just pull that out. Normally in most mice to be able to change out the switch, you would have to use a soldering iron. So it's quite a bit more complicated and you could potentially even damage the mouse. And that's it. You're good to go. So it's very, very simple. Um, I'm six foot two, so I've got pretty large hands, um, but I love the little bit of the longer mouse. This works really, really well if you're more of a traditional kind of palm grip, but it can work for a little bit of that fingertip as well as kind of claw. So you kind of can go either palm, fingertip, or claw on this mouse. Um, and it's not as lightweight as, say, something like Arcuris, but I still think it's actually pretty reasonable. So it just comes down to kind of user preference. But let me go ahead and bring up here the uh, Chakram for you guys quickly. And the other cool part that I didn't show you right here is going to be on the side. But you actually see right there that it has an actual um, joystick. And so this joystick can be mapped for different functions. You can use this within different applications and, and in Windows, but you can also, of course, use this in some games. So uh, you do have some additional flexibility in terms of what you can do there. Hey, Snef, man, happy to have you here on the stream. Yeah, um, I definitely say anybody with bigger hands, I'm a fan of this guy that I'm using right here, which is the Pugio 2. 
Um, I really like the chakram because it has that lip right there, which works really nice for people with bigger hands, and especially they're having a little bit more uh, comfort for your thumb. We also did just recently launch the Spot the X, which is even bigger. It's our biggest mouse, so it works well for also people with larger hands. Gladius 3 is a little bit more compact. I'm still a pretty good option there for people with larger hands as well. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and just show you guys right here the chakram. So you can see right there the really nice lighting zone. Uh, I didn't have minor iron RGB lighting because I hadn't charged the mouse, but um, you can see right there, of course, that side, of course, jog wheel, jog dial, right, joystick. You know, there's a lot of different ways to kind of phrase it right there. The tri-mode connectivity, 16,000 uh, DPI optical sensor, 40G and 400 IPS, fantastic metrics right there. You can see right here is where I was talking about that you can go in and there's a full video on the mapping guide functionality digital mode, which talks about, you know, how you can utilize this for, let's say, pushing to reload, switch weapons, um, to kind of tilt, talk, summon a map, you know, it's all mappable. And you do have different types of um, buttons that are present there. So you can either go with something that's shorter or something that's longer. So th those are included inside the box. This model does also give you uh, wireless charging support, uh, which would be compatible with our bat list. And up to 79 hours, keep in mind that that would be ideally generally with no lighting. But of course, with lighting um, and depending different types of functionality that you might have present, then of course, you may get less than this. And here you can see that everything comes equipped it even with a secondary set of switches, which is really, really nice. And this is a really cool design that you uh, often gets overlooked on our ROG mice. But you can see right here is a zero gap design. So the gear, zero gap design actually helps to ensure that the actual, um, that the plunger that is present on the switch is actually making direct contact with the top. And so this allows for essentially much, much better consistency and ensuring that every time you press that, you're actually making correct actuation um, and overall better performance and better consistency. All right, guys, so that is the Chakram. And again, uh, that model is, I believe, like I said, $30, $30 off. Is that right? Yes, $30 off uh, right now. So we've got one last peripheral for you guys in terms of a promo here. And that's going to be the ROG Strix Scope RX. Give me one second here, guys. So the RG Strix Scope RX, of course, one of the key aspects about this keyboard is going to be this guy right here is that it's using our RG RX mechanical switches. So these are our optical mechanical switches. Uh, really, really fantastic switches. I love the way that they feel. We have them in both linears and we also have them in um, kind of your tactile clicky. So you got them in blues. So you can get them in reds or you can get them in blues. But keep in mind that, that the red model is the only one that's currently on promotion, but it is actually at a pretty nice savings. It's $21 off right now. So I think I've got it over here. Yeah. So this is uh, the RX um, and it's got quite a number of nice features on it. It's got onboard memory that's on this keyboard. So you do have the ability of uh, profiles in there. Um, it does have a USB pass through that's on the rear right here. So if you wanna be able to plug in, you know, like a flash drive, a mouse, a keyboard, a headset, you can plug those items into it because it does have the USB pass through. This has got the number pad for people that do like a number pad on it. Um, I can go ahead and see if I can plug this in. Let me see so you guys can just kind of see the little bit of lighting pattern. I'll have to disconnect our cool little uh, setup right here for our Moonlight White accessories. Give me a second here. All right, there we go. So it should be coming on there. Systems, uh, gonna go there, there we go. So you can see, of course, full per key RGB lighting, very bright uh, lighting on this. One thing that you'll actually notice that is going to be a bit different on an RX based keyboard uh, that we have with the RX switches is that the actual, um, all the fonts and the lighting is going to be very bright. And that's just because the actual switch, if we expose uh, the actual switch directly, 
if we go into the secondary cam, um, what you'll actually see is that the LED housing is directly in the center. And so that allows us to actually center weight the legends. Um, and so that means that you don't have to have your actual legends offset. And that gives you very, very nice, clean, consistent lighting in the center of the actual uh, keycap. Um, and also allows for a really nice kind of clean, uniform look to the actual keys, which I'm a big fan of. So we can actually look at that there uh, for a moment on the secondary cam. Let me see if I can bring this over. Let's see if I can move this here, guys. Okay, so let's see here. There we go. Okay. And uh, let me see if I can go to a little bit more of a... Go to rainbow color. There we go. So got a little bit more of a rainbow vibe going on right there. So you can actually see right here that the actual, all the legends are center weighted. So here, if we take a look at my Falchion, which is a, of course, much more compact keyboard, really nice. Um, doesn't have RGB lighting on here. I changed out the keycaps on this, so it's it's got a cool little look to it. But if you'll notice, they're all offset, right? The, the actual keycap is higher. So you can see right here, the J, for instance, here is at the top. Whereas you can see over here, it's actually going to be above. So, excuse me, in the in the center. And if we actually, let's say, remove one. See if I can pull out keycap here. Right there. You can actually see how it's center weighted, right? where on a Cherry MX, uh, or traditional one, it wouldn't be center weighted. So that is gonna be a nice element right here. And of course, these are optical, so they are gonna have, um, you know, of course, it's a spill-proof based design. So it's dust-proof, spill-proof, um, and also doesn't have a mechanical mechanism, um, but they still sound quite nice. If you wanna actually hear, these are pretty similar because these are reds and these are also reds. So if you guys wanna listen, let's go ahead and uh, give you a little bit of a listening test here. They have a nice little bit of a smooth, damp sound. I would say actually sometimes even get equivalent to this, you might actually have to lube a little bit of a standard MX and um, maybe even have to have like an O-ring in there potentially. A little bit of a different setup. And now if we actually go over here to our traditional switch, turn off our keyboard so I don't cut off the stream there accidentally. So here you can hear, and we'll switch again here. So not sure how much that's going to come through for you guys, but you'll definitely hear. Uh, really, really nice design though. This is going to be again the Strict Scope RX. I'll show you guys the product page, but this I think is a fantastic option right here for uh, twenty bucks off, man. I think it's a it's a great value. So let me go ahead and. Bring this up for you guys. Is there any questions right there? Hey, Andreas, happy to see you here on the stream, man. So thank you so much. Happy you joined on the stream. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, overall, just happy to have you here, man. And uh, again, we, you know, if if you end up uh, deciding to go with one of the boards that has the dynamic OZ switcher, you know, we still have, you know, now three different motherboards, the Extreme, the Dark Hero, and the new X570 Dashi Gaming um, Wi-Fi 2 has it. Hey, King. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I can go ahead and drop the link there for you. Give me a second, and I will go ahead and drop that link for you. Uh, in terms of the 1440p monitors. So um, the, the, uh, the link uh, won't have every single monitor. Again, if you also want to kind of check out some of the models that we might have specifically dove into a little bit more, you can actually just check out any of the video on demands from some of the recent streams, um, which are both on YouTube and on Facebook. But I will link our 1440p um, 
landing page that we have that covers just these monitors in general. So hopefully this should get you covered. And if you have more questions, again, you can just join us in our PCDIY group and feel free to tag me, man. So hope this helps you, King. There you go, man. Drop that in the chat for you. Okay, and uh, let me go ahead and now show you guys here the Strict Scope RX. So here you guys can see, uh, this is the keyboard right here. You can actually also find out more about the RG RX uh, switches right here. Uh, there's a full video you can kind of click and find out about them, about their actuation, the force, total force. There's a of course, an audio test that there, that's there as well. Um, you can see the full design. And the full design is really actually important because not only does it help you to understand how we have the improvements in the lighting, uh, the outstanding lifespan, um, but also the actual des design, which helps to really reduce wobble and um, really reduce, reduce uh, what's called force deviation, which is going to give you key cap deviation, where if you don't hit the cap kind of consistently in the center, you don't necessarily always get actualized impressions. So um, overall, this kind of really design is something that we really have prided ourselves on in terms of really giving you a great experience. So if, again, we just kind of take a look at some of the cool elements, got the RX optical switches. These are going to be the reds, as I noted, dust proof and kind of spill proof based design here. USB pass through integrated memory on there for multiple profiles. You do have our privacy mode button right there that's available to you. A quick action toggle right there for all the function keys, which is nice for things like volume, pause, plot, uh, volume, pause, play, things along those lines. And of course, full Asus or sync support. Um, one cool thing that you might not know, we do have an interesting option in Armory Crate that you can actually have the lighting be smart. So the smart can actually either link to temperature or your CPU utilization. So that's kind of cool. And then, as I noted, onboard memory, full end key rollover support, on-the-fly macro recording. Um, and uh, keep in mind that also you do have full control in terms of uh, the lighting. That you, If you don't want to use the software, you do actually have function and arrow keys, which actually can control a number of the lighting profiles where you can change different modes and also uh, raise and lower the brightness levels. All right, guys. OK, so that covers the ROG Strix Scope RX. So. Let's keep moving along here in terms of some of the uh, promos that we got. We're going to talk about some monitors now, I think. Actually, networking. Um, we got this one on promo, the RTAX88U, which is a fantastic router. It's 60 bucks off, guys. I think that's a fantastic price for this router. Uh, RTX the RTAX88U is going to be really a high-performance router. So if you really want a unit that's going to have outstanding range, um, and overall speed and performance, this is a fantastic router to consider. It's really going to feature a huge amount of the really most advanced features that we have on a unit. Um, really great range. And also this unit does support AI mesh, which means you could actually pair this together with another AX88U or many of our other uh, AX-enabled AI mesh routers so that if you even need more coverage, you can pair this with a secondary ASUS router and create your own mesh network, okay? Um, so let me go ahead and actually bring up the product page for this guy, and we'll show you here. This is going to be a 4x4 based router on both the 2.4 gigahertz band and also on the 5 gigahertz band. And the reason why that can also kind of somewhat be important is that the number of transmit and receive helps to actually align with um, giving you essentially more performance in terms of not only generally range, but also in terms of the number of concurrent clients that can be handled on those bands. So again, when we talked about that multi-user MIMO technology, having a 4x4 configuration on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz is very beneficial. And uh, right here, uh, the adaptive QoS technology is a really cool feature that we have. You can easily enable this within the software, um, either through the web interface or through the Asus router app, which you can do on Android or iOS. So if you just want to prioritize gaming, web browsing, downloading, you can do that at literally the touch of a button inside of the app. It's really, really convenient. We've got things like our um, Asus AI protection technology, which is a really slick way to help to protect you from malicious links across different applications. You just turn it on and whether you're on your phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, if you accidentally click on a link that would take you to a malicious server, it'll automatically block it. 
Um, I may be actually be able to show you guys a quick demo of that here in a second if you're interested. One of the things I love about this model here is you're going to see that it's got a huge number of ports. So if you almost want like switch level class um, connectivity on the unit, you're not limited to just actually four ports. You actually have more than that available to you. And a 1.8 gigahertz quad core processor. So many times your older routers might only only have like a dual core 400, 600 megahertz processor. So 1.8 gigahertz quad core is a huge step up in terms of the overall uh, performance that you have and one gig worth of RAM. So um, again, this model being $60 off is a really, really outstanding value. Great performing unit. Um, one of my favorite recommendations for people that are looking to step up for a Wi-Fi 6 router. So let me see here if I do have it here that I can show you guys. Mm, I think I might have moved it. Um, I actually probably can do it here on my phone. Let me see if I can uh, bring up the actual page, guys. Give me one second here. I think I can show you. Yeah, here we go. I think I can do it this way. Okay, here we go. Guys. Okay, so let me show you actually how this would work. So if you went into the Asus router app and you were to turn on AI protection. So let's say you have a friend, a family member, anybody that might be just clicking on a link on their phone, right? Um, or actually any device. Again, this could be your laptop, this could be your desktop. It could be any device and it could be inside of an application. So it could be in your email, it could be in a text messaging, it could be in a messaging app, right? Let's just say somebody inadvertently just taps on a link and they don't know whether that link is safe or not safe, or maybe it looks safe, but it's actually not safe, right? Well, uh, the cool thing is here, you'll see actually how this protection mechanism works. So this is actually a test link. It's known to be malicious, but the routers are actually gonna automatically block it. So I'm gonna click on this link. And you're gonna see here in a moment there, you actually see my router has automatically blocked it. So you can see the website contains malware. Visiting this computer may harm your computer. It has automatically blocked it. And actually will send me an email notification to know that that block has happened in real time. So really, really cool feature, and it's on that router along with a lot of other really advanced um, features that you have available to you. Um, so very, very cool stuff. Let me um, see here if I can actually show you something really quick. We also have actually made some really cool UI updates um, to the Asus router app. I want to see if I can show you guys here the QoS function. Yep, there we go. And so it's going to be a little bit bright. But here you can see there's the QoS mode. You can literally just toggle it on. Once you were to toggle it on, you'll have a number of different presets, and you can literally kind of just drag and drop and slide them um, very, very conveniently. So a lot of really nice options uh, available to you within the app. And you can entirely set up the router entirely. Enti entirely via the app is uh, app there as well. All right, guys. So that covers us uh, for the AX80. Uh, excuse me, the um, the AX88U. So uh, lastly, here we've got one other router uh, that I want to be able to touch on, and that's going to be the RTAX82U. That's going to be this model right here. So this one's going to be also $30 off. So it's not going to be coming in at $200. Um, this is a fantastic choice. Again, if you want to go with a Wi-Fi 6 router, this is also going to have a really cool RGB lighting pattern that's going to be up on the uh, front of this unit. Um, very, very high performance. Really all the kind of same features that I talked about here. It's just going to be a little bit less in terms of the maximum speed and the range um, and the kind of the performance it would offer. But for a vast majority of users, this model is going to be a very, very strong uh, performing unit. And of course, keep in mind that the price delta between the two is pretty sizable. So um, the AX88U, which is, I guess, like I said, almost $60 off, that comes in at 290. This one comes in at 200. Okay. So that's where there's definitely going to be a price differentiation between the two, but two fantastic models if you're looking to be able to step up to Wi Fi 6. And uh, let me go ahead and just see if I can show you guys um, the product page for this guy.
There you guys go, okay? And you can see that now, cool little RGB lighting design. And uh, from a spec perspective, you of course can kind of see one of the uh, things is that on the 2.4, it's a two by two, as opposed to on the five, on the five gigahertz of four by four, where remember that AX88U was a four by four on both bands. And also it was a 1.8 gigahertz quad core where this is a 1.5 gigahertz tri-core. And the AX88U also has twice the amount of memory, one gigabyte versus 512. Okay. Now the memory and things like that aren't going to make as much of a factor, especially if you're not using uh, like a huge number of concurrent based specialized functions on the unit. That's very similar to kind of like on a computer, right? The more cores, the more memory, the better, especially if you're going to run a lot of things concurrently. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, it is a very cool looking design. Yes. I a hundred percent agree. If you, uh, Kind of look at that little front facade, right? Um, yeah, I can definitely see Darth Vader type vibes uh, with this type of uh, this type of router. But overall, um, really solid unit if you're just looking to be able to upgrade again to Wi-Fi six. And that model, just like the AX eighty-eight uh, U, is also going to be fully compatible with AI mesh. So if you want to pair two of those together for even broader coverage, then that will totally get care uh, take take care of you as well. Um, and speaking of um, Wi-Fi and kind of mesh based functionality. We do also have our actual high-end uh, two-pack base um, Zen Wi-Fi system. The X-T8 is also actually on promo for $60 off. So if you did want a very high-end uh, Wi-Fi mesh-based solution, then we do also have that available for you. So let me show you quickly that, guys, here. And here you have the XT8, okay, guys? And very, very broad coverage here, very rich functionality. Again, all the same options we talked about, easy to set up within the app, right? And this is really gonna be for, unit, for users that wanna be able to have that broad level of coverage, right? Uh, but out of the box because you're gonna have two units, right? This unit is also featuring a quad core based design. And this one also does feature a 2.5 gigabit LAN connection. So that's gonna be a nice option if you do have kind of maybe a newer system that does feature um, the latest generation of 2.5 gigabit connectivity, or you've got a high speed, um, you know, uh, greater than one gigabit ISP service connection. Okay, guys, so lastly here, let me just talk about some of the promos that we have here on uh, monitors. So we've got a couple of different promos for monitors, some really good ones too. Um, so on the monitor side, uh, we've got the VG259QR, which we're going to talk about $39 off. The PG259QN uh, is a 360 hertz monitor, it's $160 off. So if you've been looking for ultra high refresh rate gaming, this might be one of the best promos in a really long time, a significant price drop. 144p monitors, we're gonna have two monitors uh, that are gonna be at 39 and $49 off. So those are gonna be really, really strong options. So let's just quickly touch on these monitors right here and we will jump into it guys, so. Give me one second and I will uh, get you loaded up right here, guys. So. Actually, hold on guys, actually, that was the uh, direct Amazon listing. Let me actually show you the product page, guys. But again, this one is gonna be $39 off. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. So 24.5 uh, inches, uh, 1080p based monitor, 165 hertz, G-Sync compatible. Um, and this model is, like I said, going to be coming in at a $39 discount. So pretty nice savings on this unit. Um, and uh, you do have the G-Sync support. This is an IPS-based display. 
does have our ELMB, which is a backlight strobing technology. You have quite a number of our different kind of game modes, including shadow boost technology, ergonomic design, and a good range of connections to HDMI ports along with display port and then an earphone uh, jack that you also have available to you. If we go over here in terms of our kind of core specs, 300 nits is pretty solid in terms of the brightness rating. Uh, for some of you, that might be an upgrade. Uh, a lot of monitors still out there. Users might be in that 200 to 250 nits brightness rating. This also does feature right here a software that uh, we call a display widget light. I'm a big fan of display widget. Um, essentially, what just that means is that you have software that you can install on your desktop computer, and you can actually have control over the monitor. So you can be able to go ahead and make adjustments to on-screen display parameters. So where I find that to be really valuable is if like you want to be able to have like different profiles for different types of use case scenarios. So let's say I want to have like a certain picture preset for let's say a game versus when I'm in my browser versus when I might be looking at photos in a photo application, you can literally set different profiles specific to different applications in order to dynamically switch between those things. And that can be a lot easier to use than like an on-screen menu, right? So definitely a nice option right there. And that model is, like I said, coming in at a uh, $39 discount. So normally that monitor is costing uh, almost $250, and now it's essentially $210. So that's uh, a nice little bump, uh, bump in terms of the price point and overall nice savings that you have on that model. Uh, now next here, I want to talk about the pg uh, 25QN, uh, which is essentially the ROG Swift 360 hertz monitor. This is a pretty big price savings, like I said, down to $570. Uh, which is a big price drop on this monitor. So this is really going to be for those that are interested in response, uh, motion clarity, and really looking for the fastest, right? So 360 hertz, right? You've got a native NVIDIA G-Sync, which helps to handle, uh, of course, outstanding overdrive performance because that's all processed directly through the advanced module itself. Ultra low motion blur, one millisecond graded gray, fast IPS, uh, display HDR 400 standard right here on this monitor. So it's a bright, punchy display. Even if you're not running in quote unquote that display standard, you're still gonna get a brighter, punchier SDR experience. It's a really fantastic monitor and very good color quality. You can see a nice little comparative breakdown between the 360 and the 144 Hertz. Um, it's a very, very impressive monitor. Um, I, I'm a big fan of it. Had the opportunity to try it out and it really is Quite impressive, especially if you're still maybe running like 144, making the jump up to this. It's pretty sweet, um, especially if you know you are somebody that plays in competitively ranked games online. You can definitely have this nice benefit. There are also even more specialized options with specialized NVIDIA reflex modes and low latency modes that you have available to kind of even fine tune and further improve uh, the experience in this monitor. And wide range of ergonomic adjustments. You've got your uh, connections right here, DisplayPort, HDMI, USB hub connectivity, as well as that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that's on there. Okay, guys. And here, if we just kind of go to some of our key specs uh, for this monitor, uh, of course, this is fast IPS, uh, display brightness is 400. And again, this is gonna be a bright, punchy panel, okay? 10 bit, um, you do have up to that 360 Hertz support and you have optimizations, like I said, with different types of options that are available within the G-Sync module, including Dark Boost and ULMB. Let me just see, was there a question right there? Oh yeah, if the RTAX89X, that's a fantastic model. That's one of our highest end models, very similar to the AX88U. Um, that model, of course, sweet for those of you that are looking for 10 gigabit connectivity. So I would assume, Zach, you're serious when it comes to kind of your networking setup. Hey, Gameaholic, thanks for your feedback regarding um, essentially systems that have um, AIO. So we do actually have some uh, pre-built systems that actually do come equipped with AIO configurations. They're not gonna use the same AIOs that we sell independently like our Ryujin or Strix LC series or things along those lines, but we have had models that actually have come shipped and equipped with AIO cooling so that you can actually get better thermal performance. But thanks for your feedback, man, I appreciate that. Yeah, I would definitely say that the a, uh, AX89X, it looks a little bit crazier. Uh, maybe some people a little bit cooler than the AX88U. 
Hey, King. Uh, yes, we do have monitors with HDMI 2.1. We actually have a couple. Um, I already announced one last week in uh, last week's stream, but it's going to be the actual Tough Gaming Series monitor as well as the um, ROG uh, Series monitor, so the PG32UQ. But then we also have the Tough Gaming model, which will also be with HDMI 2.1. Uh, let me go ahead and actually link to you that one in the chat if you are interested in that model. But uh, this is, I think, probably for a lot of people, uh, the Tough Gaming VG28UQL1, uh, one, excuse me, uh, yes, uh, VG28UQL1A uh, is going to be, I think, a really great model that you're going to want to take a look at. Okay. Now, keep in mind, though, that when it comes to HDMI 2.1, unless you're in a specific scenario where you absolutely require it, a lot of people that think that they need it don't really actually need it. On the PC side, it's not really necessarily needed uh, if you, of course, have DisplayPort connectivity. And on the console side, most consoles that are using high refresh rates, so 120 hertz, um, the games that actually support that 120 hertz are only running at 1080. So that can actually be done through HDMI 2.0. So um, in pretty much the vast majority of situations, actually HDMI 2.1 is not a requirement. So there's some confusion regarding that. So you really actually want to look and make sure that the game scenario and kind of setup that you need specifically does benefit from HDMI 2.1 as opposed to thinking that you need HDMI 2.1 for your specific configuration. All right, very cool. Okay, uh, so let me go ahead and just finish up on some of our last promos here, guys. That was the ROG Swift um, 360, uh, 1440p. Yeah, here we've got two monitors that I think are gonna be really nice for you guys on the 1440p side. So I think this is gonna be very popular with a lot of you guys. So one is gonna be the ROG Swift XG27AQ. So this is gonna be a 1440p. Fast IPS, 170 hertz, one millisecond gray to gray. This model is almost $50 off. So really, really, really great uh, price tag for this guy coming in at 450, okay? And then we're also going to have, uh, where is it right here? Yeah, the XG279Q, which is uh, almost $40 off. And so coming in at 560. So these are two fantastic monitors that I th definitely think you guys are going to want to check out if you're interested in 1440p. So let me go ahead and um, bring up these guys right here. So give me one second. So first here we've got um, this guy. The ROG Strix XG279Q, um, and this one is coming in at a price drop of $39 currently. So nice little promo there. Um, 2560 by 1440, like I said, fast IPS, 170 hertz, one millisecond gray to gray, ELMB sync, which means that it supports our uh, backlight strobing at the same time as of adaptive sync, along with the display HDR 400 standard. Um, so very, very nice. This is, I think, for many people are gonna be a fantastic monitor and a really, really sound upgrade. Um, if you're a gamer, but you're somebody else who wants very good picture quality, so you appreciate good just content when you're looking at you know, photos, uh, you're watching videos online, you're you know, on video uh, streaming services, maybe you're a little bit into photography, this is a really great balanced monitor in terms of the specifications and feature set that it has. Nice range of connectivity, HDMI 2.0, 2.0, display port, and an actual USB 3.0 hub along with that 3.5 millimeter jack. Uh, we can take a look here at the quick specs. Um, this is gonna be display HDR 400. So again, it's gonna be a punchy, dynamic, bright display. Um, that, again, that ELMB sync, which is gonna be really nice, uh, shadow boost, and also has our display widget. So display widget, really, really nice because you can control all the on-screen display items inside of Windows. You don't have to use the buttons. So again, this guy coming in at uh, $39 off right now, okay? So uh, next up here, what do we have? We have the uh, XG27AQ, which is uh, $50, uh, almost $50 off, $49 off. So let's go ahead and take a look at that guy. Going to be very similar in terms of the specs. So uh, one millisecond gray to gray, fast IPS, NVIDIA G-Sync, and display HDR 400 as well. You can see the base design a little bit different on this model. A 
Okay, guys. So very, very cool uh, monitor again here on this side. So XD27AQ is on promo. And then we also have, as I noted, the uh, secondary, uh, excuse me, yes, XG27AQ and the XG279Q. Those are both on promo. So check those guys out, guys. And uh, that pretty much wraps up our promos, guys. Um, lastly, I did want to touch on that if anybody's looking at any motherboards, we do have some current promos right now on B550. The RG Strix B550-F gaming Wi-Fi is off for 15 bucks. So if you guys are checking out for something for the AM4 side, the B450 uh, Gaming 2 is uh, also on a, a quick promo. It's already a pretty uh, aggressively priced board, but it's also got a $10 promo right now. And anybody maybe considering an 11th gen or 10th gen series uh, build uh, or maybe an upgrade, if you've got 10th gen, but you wanted maybe some of the features on an 11th gen series motherboard, we've got the RG Strix C590-E Gaming for $30 off. So that wraps up our promos, guys. Overall, that takes care of pretty much everything that I want to be able to touch on this guy's stream. Um, make sure to keep it tuned to next week. Next week, we're going to have some cool stuff going on. We've got multiple streams that we're going to be covering where we've got um, a coverage that's going to dive into this entire range of the Moonlight White peripherals. So you can see we've got the Moonlight White headset, Moonlight White keyboard. We've got the Moonlight ma uh, White mouse. Uh, we also even have the Moonlight White IEMs. Um, and we have a great range of white products that we'll touch on in that stream. Uh, we've also got some really cool uh, other announcements that are going to be coming out in October and more live streams specifically on just those products. So if you guys aren't part, again, of the PCDIY group, make sure to join the group there so that you'll get all the insights and announcements as they come up. If you're following us on, of course, Facebook or YouTube, make sure to go ahead and just check out the announcement post that we have there for those forthcoming streams. And as course, always, um, you can always stay in the loop by just checking us out here on Fridays for our PCDIY streams where we touch on anything that might have been new that we've announced and kind of dived into. Uh, you can get availability updates, insights, and more details as well. So uh, with that, guys, hopefully everybody is having a, uh, a good uh, end of their day um, and looking forward to the weekend. So as always, hopefully everybody is going to stay safe, stay healthy, um, and enjoy your guys' weekend. So with that, guys, take care. Take it easy. Uh, let me just see here. Looks like we've got one, one, class, one last question here to uh, take a look at before we wrap up the stream. Min AAO PCs with the PCs. I haven't seen this much in the segment like the external GP. Yeah, so uh, Gameaholic, we actually have um, launched a couple of different actually AIOs. Um, we have those generally what referred to as under our Zen AIO line here. So if you want, I can actually show you here quickly um, the models. And it is, a, it is actually an, a category that we have consistently tried to make sure that we've offered, I think, a really nice set of options on. Um, and so we do have quite a number of different type of models that we've made available um, in terms of their overall design. So let me go ahead and see if I can uh, bring it up here. One second. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna bring it up in here. Give me one moment. And normally we don't bring usually bring those systems up because of course they're not necessarily always kind of uh, gaming centric, right? But that doesn't mean like to your point, right? That uh, that they might not be something that of course of is uh, of interest uh, for users, right? Now, in terms of kind of, um, I would say to your point when you asked about kind of integration for an external GPU, that's probably something that wouldn't necessarily commonly happen because to do that you would have to have Thunderbolt, and it's really kind of adds more complexity and cost into this kind of segmentation. Uh, for us, I think our focus is more so at really trying to ensure that the um, experience and the performance and the feature set is really are kind of already kind of fully integrated, right, um, within, uh, within an AIO-based product. So here we go. Yeah. All right, so let's see if I can show it to you guys. Here we go. There you go. So this is one of our uh, kind of most recent models here, the uh, Zen AIO 24 inch. You can see it's got a really nice clean design, right? Nice thin bezels, uh, of course, nice fully integrated speaker right there. Of course, camera there, nice base uh, in terms of the overall design aesthetic as well. Let's see here, we can actually do like a little bit of, I think, a 360 degree view here. Let's see if actually that loads up here. Give me one second and then I'll reshare back over. Yeah. 
Actually, I can do that better, I think, through the images. So just go back here. There we go. OK. I will just show it to you there. There we go. And uh, it does come in a couple of different colors. You can see right here in terms of the kind of the color scheme, right? I think it's a very classy uh, looking unit. Um, this is really nice right here where uh, even in AIO, sometimes you don't necessarily always get the greatest kind of picture quality, I think, in terms of kind of the panel performance. But you can see 100% um, sRGB coverage, IPS uh, level display, thin bezel design, full multi-touch, which is fantastic for Windows 10 and for Windows 11. Um, that nice integration in terms of a high quality speaker. You can see all your connectivity right there for LAN, HDMI, multiple uh, USB ports right there. Front facing speakers, which are nice in terms of the overall design aesthetic right there. This is also powered by the Ryzen 5700U. So with the Ryzen 5700U, if you're not familiar, um, this is actually a very um, performing capable part. It's actually the same part of a part. Um, I'm gonna be touching this in another stream that'll be coming up shortly. This is our little uh, mini PC guy right here, um, down here. So the, the these we actually have now with the new PN51 series are featuring the same U series processors. Um, but these processors are utilizing Zen 2 and you can go up to eight cores and 16 threads. So having essentially a 5700 U, it's quite capable in terms of the performance uh, to 32 gigabytes of RAM. And then of course you have integrated Vega graphics support. And you do have robust storage integration in here, including SSD based storage. And you can see on terms of the connectivity on the side, you're gonna have your USB-C, your type A, your HDMI switch to be able to toggle between different inputs, an audio jack and the power button, and then all your connections there on the rear as well. And Wi-Fi 6, of course, is baked in for that high-speed networking support. And that Windows uh, camera is fully Windows Hello support, so nice biometric-based login uh, experience as well. And you can see even Visa mount integration. So this is actually a pretty nice model. So again, uh, hopefully that maybe answers your question as far as maybe a, a cool AIO. We do have a couple of other offerings that you can check out there. They are listed on the ASUS product page. But thanks for asking your, your, your question, Gearholic. Hopefully that answered it for you there. Hey, Milch, um, no plans right now on doing anything. I think Apex non-traditional uh, form factor. Um, you know, the reality is MATX is very kind of a niche form factor in terms of its adoption. Uh, realistically, the broadest segment of the market is really interested in ATX-based solutions. Even mini ITX, which we're a leader in terms of offering the highest performing mini ITX solutions on the market, it's a very small percentage of the market. And uh, it takes quite an extensive time in terms of design and development for such specialized SKUs, um, especially to the caliber that a lot of enthusiast community wants. So it really comes down to a balancing act of, does that potentially affect the ability to design and develop other boards that are gonna have a much broader level of adoption? Um, so especially when we're talking about, I think an overclocking focus, um, Apex, I think what you would be talking about when you talk about micro ATX is technically the gene, uh, which I helped to actually push our design and development team on in terms of releasing. But right now there's no plans for any type of new updated gene-based models. Um, we definitely still will continue a focus of always offering a micro ATX based, a micro ATX based solution along with mini ITX and of course traditional ATX. But specifically for an Apex or overclocking uh, focus, high-end overclocking focus, because many of our micro ATX boards um, uh, that we do offer can offer you a great realistic overclocking experience. Uh, you're gonna really only see that on the ROG ATX side of the fence, okay? Yeah, so um, thanks for your uh, feedback, Gearaholic. I think, you know, it's definitely interesting on whether or not an, an, uh, like an all-in-one integrated unit would be something that would make sense, I think, for kind of the gaming-related audience. I think the reality is that uh, in that space, it probably would make more sense for users to probably consider a laptop with an external display or, again, a desktop, which could come in so many different types of configurations to be able to offer that type of experience. But again, I think, you know, Asus has been at the forefront of different designs, so we never know. You never know what you might see, and I think, you know, we're always interested in hearing consistent feedback from the community on products that they would like to see designed and developed. But until we see, I think, a much broader set of people that are really communicating that that's the type of solution they want, um, you know, I think that probably what you're going to continue to see with an AIOs is going to be a more traditionally designed product that's 
probably for more broader kind of general users uh, in terms of offering great performance, uh, good GPU performance, but not necessarily focused on like high-end gaming type performance uh, for let's say AAA level titles, right? All right, guys. Um, so, hey, Zach, uh, we're rounding out. Keep trying to round out the stream here. And we've got one last question. It's the last question here for the stream. Will there be any Poseidon or Matrix GPUs? Um, I can't tell you whether they will or will not be. Uh, Poseidon and Matrix GPUs are always designed and developed as kind of a, um, I'd say, specialized design pursuit. So it's never a guaranteed product. It's similar to some, some of our other motherboards, like let's say like an Extreme or an Apex, which may not be present every generation. And sometimes we look to be able to implement those designs. So you may see a Poseidon in the future. You may see a Matrix in the future. But as of right now, there's no immediate plans to release either one of those for the current GPU lineup. Our focus is to continue to offer uh, the breadth and depth of what we have right now, which is the Strix LC series. So those are the ones which feature an integrated AIO cooler, the high-end Strix series, Tough Gaming series, um, the Dual series, the KO series, and also our Turbo series. Um, that kind of makes up the entirety, with the exception of also Phoenix. Phoenix is a little bit more entry, so it's not really in the segment that you're talking about. Matrix and Poseidon are very much at the top end, so they would be along with kind of the strict series class graphics cards, um, but positioned with more specialized design focus on them. But as of right now, no plans for those cards, but you never know. You might see those again in the future, uh, as always. If they are going to be announced, uh, you just want to make sure to check out this stream. So with that, man, take care, take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your day. You guys have a great weekend.